now we got those little side quests out of the way, now we can return to the adventure proper. And remember, we played Syria's song to telepathically communicate with Syria, who indicated that we should maybe try going to speak to King Zora. Because the Deku Tree told her that he had the third spiritual stone, the spiritual stone of water. So the way we get to see King Zora is by going up the river to Zora's river. You'll see here there should be a sign here indicating that this is the correct way. Zora's River. Watch out for swift current and strong undertow. Yeah, so we're going to try to stay out of the river, at least for the most part, because, yeah, the current will just carry us all the way back out. Right, look, and our owl friend is up here again. Woohoo! Looks like you've gotten bigger and stronger already, Jordan. Just ahead lies Zora's Domain. The Zoras serve Hyrule's royal family by protecting this water source. Their door will not open for anyone except those who have some connection with the royal family. Let them hear the melody of the royal family. So again, that's alluding to Zelda's lullaby once again. Hooray! It is interesting, um, uh, just to give you a little demonstration of how our new uh, powered up spin attack works. We'll charge it up and then back our way into this little patch of grass here. Boom, look how destructive that is. It just took almost all of them out. If I was positioned a little bit better, I could have taken them all out, but, uh... And if we roll into this tree here, we'll find another gold sculpture. Look at that, I rolled out of the way just in time. <laughs> Don't forget to pick up the token. And now we can bomb our way here through... This is again to uh, prevent you from coming this way before you've uh, gotten the second spiritual stone. And you'll also notice here, too, that this is another area where time passes. Because, remember, it's not like a village. We entered the area like we were entering a village. But, um... Time does flow. Just like out in the field. Alright, so we'll turn it back to day here. There's a, uh, a lone Kuko uh, running around here in this area. Remember that. We're going to come back for it in a bit. But I'm just going to explore the area here now. This guy here is a good character to talk to. Chomp, chomp, chomp. How about some magic beans? They aren't selling very well. How about 10 rupees for one piece? Okay, we'll buy one. Multi colors. You got a magic bean. Find a suitable spot for a garden and plant it with C. Then wait for something to happen. On the select item subscreen, you can set it to one of the C buttons and then use that C to plant it. If you want to plant beans, go around and look for soft soil. Chomp, chomp, chomp. So, as it turns out, these soil patches with the hole in the center that we've been seeing so far around Hyrule, this is what that's all about. Those are your locations where you are able to plant these beans. And I will give you a demonstration. So we equip the bean that we just bought. And all we do is stand close to one of these bean bed patches. There's one, again, conveniently located right next to this guy. So I can show you right here. You just stand close to it and press the C button. And we plant a magic bean. And look at this. It immediately sprouts a magic leaf. Now, it doesn't appear to be doing anything for us. But don't worry about that. Later on in the game, it's going to come back into play. And so you'll see that it actually is worth it to try to find as many of these bean beds as you possibly can and plant as many of these magic beans as you can. So, we'll come and talk to our friend here again. Chomp, chomp, chomp. How about some magic beans? Well, they're not that popular yet. How about 20 rupees for one piece? Well, wait a minute now. The last one was 10. So you see what happens here now. The more you buy, the more popular they get. So he just keeps jacking and jacking up the price. So every subsequent magic bean that you buy increases by 10 rupees. Um, there's a total of 10 magic bean beds throughout all of Hyrule. We just found one right there. Um, so there's actually only a limit of 10 magic beans that it's possible to buy uh, in total. Um, so we can buy nine more. So... Um, 
And that means that by the time we get to the tenth magic bean, he's gonna be charging us a whopping hundred rupees for just the one the one magic bean. So we're not able to afford all of them just yet, but we'll buy as many as we can for right now. But twenty rupees for one piece. Okay. La. Talk to him again. How about some magic beans? They are getting to be quite popular. 30 rupees for one piece. How about it? Yes. Alright. Skip through all that again. Talk to him again. Chomp, chomp, chomp. How about some magic beans? They're all the rage. <laughs> 40 rupees for one piece. And that's all we're able to afford for right now. But uh, I did um, the math. It turns out in order to afford all 10 magic beans, you will have to have spent a total of 550 rupees to get them all. That's quite a bit of cash. Uh, finest, and as it, even with a full wallet right now, we're only even capable of carrying a maximum of 200 rupees. So yeah, we're going to have to make multiple visits back to him in order to, uh, to get them all. But anyway, uh, we'll skip all that again there. Okay, so uh, we've got those now. Um, now, I didn't cover this before, um, because there wasn't really any need to, because we didn't even have magic beans. So I didn't need to talk about how, what the purpose of those bean beds even was. But, I'll tell you this now, um, one of the reasons why it's advantageous to have an empty bottle is to be able to pick up those, um, those bugs that we see every once in a while. They're usually found under a stray rock that you can pick up and throw. The bugs, bottle bugs like to hide under rocks. So if you pick one up, um, and it's interesting too that once it's in your bottle, it like somehow magically multiplies into three. So you can actually do this trick where you can then empty the bugs out of your bottle, and three of them will be there, but then you can immediately recatch one again. So then you'll still have the two bottle bugs that you just released scattering around, and then the third one you'll have picked up in your bottle, and then that one will now magically multiply into three bugs. So if you're having trouble finding more bugs and you've only got the one, you can actually fill all of your bottles potentially just by doing that little trick. Anyway, uh, the point of carrying around those bugs is because if you bring them to these bean beds, um, you can actually release them also on top of or near the bean beds, and the bugs will climb their way into uh, the holes in the center, and what they'll actually do is drive out a gold sculptula, even in the middle of the day. The sculptula is fine there during the day because it's hiding buried deep inside the patch. Now, this one patch here is actually the exception. It's the only uh, of all the bean beds in the entire game uh, that don't house uh, a gold sculptula. So I didn't have any problem planting uh, the magic bean there for right now. Let's see what Navia has to say. Oh, he, she's telling us the same clue before. We already covered that. Uh, yeah, just because we're taking a while to uh, to get to sink King Zora. Now, what I usually like to do then is uh, just because there's so many bean beds, it can be a little bit um, tricky keeping track of which bean beds you've already driven a gold sculptula out of. Um, so the way that I manage that is I will only uh, use bottle bugs and scare out the sculptula if I already have an extra magic bean that I can plant in that same bed. That way I drop the bugs, I get the gold sculptula, then I plant the bean, and when I plant the bean, the plant immediately sprouts. And that way every time I revisit a bean bed and I see that there's a sprouted plant there, I know that I've already gotten the gold sculptula in that bed and I don't have to worry about it anymore. So that's just how, you don't have to do it that way, but that's, I recommend doing it that way. It's a, a handy way of, of keeping track uh, because otherwise you're liable to forget and you really don't want to have to keep retracing your steps, revisiting every single bean bed in all of Hyrule, wasting more and more bugs, uh, you know, trying to find the ones that you missed. Uh, but uh, anyway, so uh, now uh, because of this gate here, we can't get by, so we're going to have to cross the river somehow. The easiest way to do that is over here where there's this like sort of light patch of soil. We can actually jump across right there. Also note here too, um, there are uh, occasionally these little sort of like ramp areas here. So if you do accidentally uh, fall into the river, even though the current will carry you and it is a pretty strong current, very difficult to swim against, uh, you will still able to, if you can swim at least close enough to one of these ramps here, uh, you'll be able to uh, walk your way out. All right, so now we've encountered a new enemy. Those are called Octorox. And now that we're um, out of the danger of the uh, Death Mountain area, it is uh, safe now to re-equip our Deku Shield. And it's just as well that we do that now because this is an enemy in which 
pretty well the only way to defeat them is to uh, bounce back their rock attacks like that. I think you may be able to hit them with your uh, slingshot as well, but you have to hit them from afar anyway, because as soon as you get too close, just like the business scrubs, or any of the scrubs really, when you get too close, they just hide back in their flower. Uh, same thing with the Octorok. You get too close with them, and uh, they just hide underwater. All right, so uh, we'll jump across like that. Now we're on the other side of the gate, and we can't really go up this way because that ledge is too high, and the river there, we won't be able to get up. So we'll come around this way. It's turned to night again already. Look at that. And uh, we'll come around this way. And uh, look, we've got another gate here. We can't get by the gate. And uh, look down there. There's another new enemy there. Oops. Ooh, almost fell down that way. Make sure to hop across. But uh, it looks like a blue tech tag. Remember, we encountered red tech tags on the way up Death Mountain Trail. That is a blue colored one. Uh, see, we're not able to even jump across there. So you may have noticed, if uh, you were paying attention, there's a piece of heart positioned precariously up on that platform up there, but we can't get to it just yet. The tech tag, it's hard to beat on the water, lure it onto the land. So you can see that these guys are sort of like these like uh, water skimmers. They can. Uh, Traverse on water or on land. So yeah, like it said, you may get it up on land. You also notice there too that they actually have twice the amount of health as red tech tights do. So they're just a little bit trickier. Fortunately, we can also hit them with uh, Deku seeds from afar. Make sure that you get them while they're stationary on the ground like that, because if you get them while they're jumping, you're almost certain to miss. Here's something a little fun here. If we go step onto this log. And then walk over this way. Some frogs are looking at you from underwater. Hmm. That's interesting. But what you can actually do is if you stand right in this very spot and take out your ocarina, the frogs pop up. Look at this. If you just kind of play around with the notes on your ocarina, you'll notice that each of these frogs jump up and croak. Uh, and correspond with one of the buttons, either the four C buttons like this, right? And then the A button down here. And in fact, even their positioning mimics the way that the buttons are positioned on the controller, right? Um, so it's sort of like this neat, fun little thing that you could play around with. But what you can do is if you play one of the songs that you actually know, they'll also give you a little reward. So let's try playing Zelda's Lullaby, for example. What happens here? Oh, that frog grew real big. Young lad, you played the ocarina well. Mm. That melody is so fine, Ribbit. We all should practice it, Ribbit. Take rupees as a souvenir. If you come up with another nice melody, please drop by and play it. Ribbit, Ribbit. Oh, look at that! 50 rupees! That is not a bad prize! Well, we do, as it happens, know three other songs. Let's see what happens if maybe we play those songs. So let's try a bonus song. We'll play that one. Second frog has grown real big. The ocarina. Well, I think he says the exact same thing as the first frog says, so we'll just skip through all that. And we get yet more rupees. Not bad at all. Alright. Let's keep this up. Let's play another one. Let's try Saria Song. Okay. Now, if you get, um,. 50 rupees every single time you do this. I'm going to maximize uh, the value that I get for my rupees. So before I play that fourth song that we know, which is Sun Song, I'm actually going to spend some of these rupees, because you'll see how many rupees we have. Oh yeah, there's another uh, thing to point out here, that as you uh, swim down the river, you can also pick up some rupees that way there too. Just the same way as you could when we were in the moat outside of um, Hyrule Castle. 
But um, yeah, so you'll see here, um, now we can only carry another 24 rupees before we get maxed out. So anything additional than that, uh, if you pick up like a big rupee, for example, just gets lost. You don't get that money. So because I want to maximize the value, I'm going to spend some of these rupees now. So we'll just come back to the bean salesman now that we got some extra cash and buy some. We have the popular magic beans. You'll regret it now if you don't buy them. 50 rupees for one piece, just for now. Okay, and we'll buy a sixth one. These are the super popular magic beans. In case you're wondering, they'll soon be sold out. Super price, 60 rupees for one piece. <laughs> okay, so now he's trying to like, he's jacking up the price, but he's trying to sell you on how it's this great bargain. Okay, so that's all that we can afford for now, because again, remember now the seventh bean we buy will now be 70 rupees. And we don't have quite that much yet, but um, anyway, we don't need to buy them all right now. We haven't even found all the bean beds in the game just yet anyway, but um, anyway, we'll make our way back here. There is actually something else coming up soon that we're also going to be needing to spend some rupees on, so we don't want to spend everything just yet anyway. Keep a little bit of extra scratch in our wallet. All right, come back, take up the ocarina, and we'll play our the fourth song that we know, Sun Song. Okay, and now we got those. So now, um, as you can imagine, there are um, many other songs that we learn, obviously, in the game, so if we just continue to return, and play those songs as well. We'll get uh, to continue to get more rewards. Now you don't get them for all the songs though. Um, we'll cover it once once we get to that point. But um, uh, basically, there's one more song that we can play um, that uh, will make that fifth frog uh, giant. And um, oh yeah, here you know what? We didn't actually see the description from Navi here. Yeah, see Octa Rock bounce back the rocks. They spit at you. Mm. So he's kind of low here because of uh, where the ro he shoots the rock out when he's like high up. So this one isn't gonna hit him. So we're just gonna shoot this guy here from afar. Look, we even shot the rock that he spit at us before we hit him. <laughs> yeah, and you can just ignore this guy and walk past him if you want. But um, and uh, take care to not accidentally drop into the water here in this part. And uh, now that it's nighttime, we'll take advantage of this little spot here. If we jump down here, oh, there's a heart piece over there. Keep that in mind. If we jump down to here, there's this ladder here, right? So we can use the ladder to get back up, but there's a gold sculpture right there. And that sculpture only appears here at night. During the day, it disappears. So we'll take advantage of the fact that it's night and get it while we're here. And climb back up this way. And uh, what we'll do is before we progress further now, actually it looks like we've hit a dead end because we've reached this uh, waterfall here, right? But uh, this uh, slab here, if we check this, Sleepless Waterfall, the flow of this waterfall serves the King of Hyrule when the King slumbers, so do, so too do these falls. So that's your, um, your cue that this is uh, the spot you stand on to play Zelda's Lullaby to be able to progress past past this point here. Just before I do, though, I'm going to do a couple of things. First, I just want to point out this area here, over to the side here. There's this little pool that we can drop down in. And again, if we hold A and dive, we still can't dive low enough to um, enter into that uh, little uh, entranceway there. But if we are, um, that is the uh, entranceway that connects uh, the portal also back to the Lost Woods. Um, so uh, we've uh, pointed out already how there's that stone archway in the Lost Woods. That's the portal to uh, Goron City. Um, so this is also, if you're in the Lost Woods, will be a quick way to return here to uh, Zora's River. So um, again, we can't do anything about it because our skills haven't advanced yet to the point where we can dive deep enough. But uh, just uh, log that away for when we're able to. You'll know where to find it when you want to. Um, okay. Um, before we uh, move on, though, there's one other thing we want to do, which is to get that um, heart piece. Now, um, again, uh, referencing back to that uh, pillar early on, we still aren't able to do anything about the, uh, the heart piece that's there just yet. 
but we can get this heart piece that's right there. It looks like it's too far for us to jump, and there's nothing else for us to climb. But what we can do is if we go all the way back to the beginning, and for this, actually, I am going to intentionally jump into the river, just because it's a convenient way to quickly bring our way all ourselves all the way back to the beginning area. We could, you know, just go this way on foot if we wanted, but uh, you can see we can't even quite get up onto that ledge there either. But we'll just pick up all these rupees along the way too, so that's convenient. Come along this way, and while we're over here, maybe we'll buy just one more magic bean. What the heck? Chomp, chomp, chomp. We have the super rare magic beans. This could be your last chance. <laughs> Special price, 70 rupees for one piece. All right, we still got enough rupees left over to do the thing that we're gonna be doing that I alluded to. But uh, the reason we're coming back here is so that we can pick up this Kuko. You may remember from when we first visited Kakariko Village and one of the little um, side quests there was to bring all of the Kukos back to their pen. And some areas were only accessible by picking up a Kuko and then making a jump. Because of the Kuko's ability to fly, or at least hover for short distances, you can actually cover some distances a little bit further than you normally would. And you can see here, holding that Kuko, it still wasn't even far enough to be able to make that ledge. But that's fine. What we're really doing is bringing it back to that second ledge near the waterfall. Here, we're going to have to throw the Kuko from these platforms here because we can't, uh, you know, pull ourselves up those ledges while we're holding the Kuko. No, 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 no! Quick, 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 quick! Grab it, grab it before it gets away, gets away! Oh my god, this guy's a pain in the ass! Get the hell over here! Uh, okay. In the event that he really does get away with you from you, um, don't panic. All you gotta do is go all the way back to the beginning again, and he'll like have respawned there again. It's just as a pain in the ass. I don't want to have to go all the way back. Okay, so if we uh, position ourselves up at the top here, we should be able now. If we go line ourselves up nice and straight, and then run it full speed and then continue to hold up on the stick and push up. There we go. We made our way all the way across. We just <laughs> chucked the Kuko. We're done with you now. Alright. Excellent. 